It's time for the Maximum PC No BS Podcast, episode 224 for the week of May 21st, 2014. On today's show, we'll be dis- discussing Microsoft's newly announced Surface Pro 3, the Xbox losing its Kinect, Alienware's Steam Machine, the FCC, and self-driving cars. So strap in, here we go. So joining me on this podcast are intern uh, Clark Crisp. Hey, what's up? Associate editor Tom McNamara. How you doing? Managing editor Elena Yi. Hello. Uh, editor in chief Gordon Maung. Hello. And I am Jimmy Thang. And uh, let's dive into our, our first topic. Uh, yesterday, Microsoft uh, unveiled their their Surface Pro Three. And uh, Elena, can you sort of uh, tell us more about that? Um. Well. Um, so it's uh, going to be larger this time around, 12-inch screen. Aspect ratio is going to be 3-2. Uh, um, kind of surprising, actually. Yeah, I, I think it's the same because as the Pixel, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, Pixel's 3-2. Uh, yeah, so I was just, um, I mean, I personally found that surprising just because you know, uh, the widescreen's been the trend for a while now. Yeah. yeah. So it's more like a square now? Yeah, it's much more square-like. I actually right. was looking at it, and I was like, oh, that looks a lot like my really, really old laptop mm. you know, back in the day. Before uh, the widescreen thing became a thing, because everyone's apparently is watching movies. On so, it. do they want more for this for this Surface Pro Two or Pro they Three? They do. It's uh, the so the one that uh, um, um, the person that did our preview that's going to be coming in our next issue. Um, this the, for the specs that he had, um, thirteen hundred dollars. So that's for, uh, the, for the most inexpensive one. No, that's the highest end. I think. Yeah. No, the highest end I think is the no, two thousand dollars. Two thousand. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I think that's a mid range. Yeah, like Core i five. There's an i three down at six ninety nine, sixty one hundred and twenty gig or no sixty four gig. I think before they were just doing the i five, so that's interesting. Yeah. That's no, they had a really. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. I think it was i five. Well, I don't know. I didn't follow Surface two too closely, but mm-hmm. the original yeah. Surface Pro, which we both have here, those were i fives, just depending on the size of the SSD, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah I it's think depending so. on sixty four or one twenty eight. I noticed that they also made it thinner, which is apparently really important. <laughs> I actually been looking forward to that. Yeah, because it's, it's a little thick. I mean, yeah, I guess it's I guess a little chunky. I don't know if like I don't know where the camera is, but like it's 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 got some heft to it. Like if you're used to picking up an iPad, you're like ugh when you first pick yeah. this one up. I just I guess th- my my problem is that in cell phones they're always making them thinner and thinner and thinner, uh, while the battery stays the exact same size. And I'm like, could you just make the battery larger instead? I don't think anybody would mind. We're talking about like one less than a millimeter now. Yeah, but I almost wonder if people just want when they go into the store and they feel it or whatever they they, they want it to feel they thinner. Want, do they want know? it to be like two dimensional, just like paper thin, you know? And this is not that that is pretty thick though for a tablet. They they want right. something that's like a credit card that that. You, that I don't think they're ever gonna get that thin though. Like I it's don't know. not gonna be like mobile phones where you're like, ah, oh, I just lost my phone. You're gonna be able to eat your. They used to be really super bulky. bulky. And and they're, I, but I, as far as more specs, I think they're both Haswell based, right? Because the original, well, the Surface Two is Haswell based. And then yeah. the Surface 3, which is a, a bigger number, I'm surprised this is yeah, not really a big CPU bump. I'm not, I mean, for me personally, I'm actually, I've always been more interested in the battery life. So I'm, yeah. I'm a little intrigued by the, their claims of potentially, it says, up to nine hours of web browsing. Web browsing, wow. Yeah. That's usually the most, one of the most consumptive activities, right? It's much Absolutely. Weird. Yeah. That actually, yeah, I that's not bad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, well, it is a my phone, but my phone's a piece of crap. Well, the other uh, thing I love is the uh, the screen. So oh, right, because right, the, the, the original just changed. The original screen only had one angle, which is apparently I and I they use at um, Gitmo when they interrogate prisoners. So there's like one painful uh, angle on the original <laughs> Surface Pro. Mm. Right. Surface Two, it yeah, had a it second it angle. Has two angles. So are using this tape as a... Yeah, that's that's how I improved it. I just lay it back with <laughs> some tape. <laughs> and actually, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, this angle is actually going to be a thing on the Surface Pro 3 where you actually can set it in what they call it in canvas mode. Canvas mode, very nice. Maybe it's, I guess, for the artist to actually use it as a, like a oh, very okay. uh, that expensive makes sense. Wacom tablet. I like that. So it's a continuous Thir- A $1,300 Wacom tablet. <laughs> no, $2,000 Wacom tablet. <laughs> but, uh, it's also supposed to support a higher resolution screen too, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's not quite 4K, though. 2000 yeah. something by our brothers. The uh, keyboard's supposed to be improved as well because uh, they actually want 
So the the, bi the biggest drawback of the original Surface Pro, and I think probably also the Pro 2, is that you can't really use it in your lap the way that you can do a laptop. I mean, you, if you're really careful, you can sit there like this and be like, okay, don't yep. move, don't move, and it won't topple over. But the new keyboard's supposed to like wrap around and like oh, like lock in a little bit better. Like if there's like a little lip right in here. Oh. So supposedly that's supposed to make it a little bit easier to keep this in your lap. Okay. Yeah, the resolution, by the way, is 2160 by 1440. That's huh, pretty high res. Yeah. What are you guys thinking of the aspect, r aspect ratio thing? I've gotten used to widescreen. Yeah. I'm, really? by I'm, I'm not saying it, that widescreen is better. I'm just saying that I'd, and I could relearn a new aspect ratio. I used to be, I had a 12 by 10 monitor for years and years and years back home. That was like 4 by 3, I think. No, it was 5 by 4 or something crazy. You know, and then I then I got a widescreen monitor, and I was like, "This is really great. I don't want to go back." I, I think for <laughs> like for like web surfing, I think it should be fine. But watching videos and stuff like that. Um yeah, it it depends what you use it most for, right? So like for me, switching to widescreen was actually a bummer because I primarily tend to carry a laptop with me for work. So when I'm doing like editing, like I want more words on the page. You just rotate the. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little awkward. <laughs> um, so for me, I'm actually a little excited about going back to having a little bit more like real estate at the top. Yeah, you, you can't do but, that with a laptop. But that you can't said, just, like, watching movies is going is going to be weird. Having like the black bars like it'd show be, up yeah. again. It'd be really cool if they had a laptop where you could like extend the screen and then like rotate it. And then yeah. Put it back. You know, I just realized that is kind of a bummer thing because I mean the surface, which I'm if you're just listening, so you can remove the 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 keyboard from the surface right you could actually run it in portrait mode but the keyboard doesn't work yeah it doesn't connect because it's not bluetooth very it connects directly to it it's like it's too bad they couldn't yeah. put it like either a connector or actually make the keyboard wireless so you could use both yeah yeah or you could just use a, the, a cheaper bluetooth keyboard yeah <laughs> yeah but then you know you've got to carry another keyboard yeah i think that keyboard surfaces. costs like 160 dollars too uh it's 130 130 and That's you will if you already yeah. own a surface pro you are going to have to buy a new type uh, type or touch cover because just because the uh surface 3 is going to be oh yeah, that much inches. bigger yeah yeah do you feel like um, microsoft is taking a, a note out of apple's playbook right here um in for what regard yeah. Well, I, I remember reading a long time ago how Microsoft was pissing everybody off by basically introducing their own hardware here, right? And now I kind of see the iterations of Surface 1, Surface 2, Surface 3, just like they do with the iPad. And then all of a sudden they'll just rebrand it as the iPad, you know, <laughs> the new one. Well, they haven't done that uh, yet, so. Nah. Well, I, I although, although, you know, I do think it's interesting is because the original Surface RT was supposed to go up against tablets. That I think they haven't announced well, a new RT no, one. I'm just sure they new won't. New Surface Pro. So I think that might be their possibly a uh, a nod to the fact that they have not been doing as well in that RT tablet right. space as they wanted to. But even the Surface Pro was a direct attack uh, on their OEM partners yeah. and pissed yeah. everybody off. It's like, look, we sell laptops. You're making something that cuts into our laptop sales. They yeah. all run out and they start making Chromebooks. Of course, it's, I'm not sure. It's not the only thing that did it. But, of course, Microsoft's message with Surface 3, because it's, it's bigger, it's a more capable machine in a lot of ways, is we go, we go up against um, MacBook Air and Ultrabooks. So it's like, it's like yeah, they're still rubbing it in their partner's eyes, it seems like. just kind of that, like That's the message, right? Well, no, yeah. Well, now also, it's, 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 almost, it's almost a laptop it's instead of just being sort of this hybrid. Right. I mean, so. it still is a hybrid, but right. it's much more laptop-y than it is tablet-y. Yeah, and I kind of wonder, I mean, the I mean, the whole, I think the thing that sort of made Surface RT, Surface Pro even somewhat useless was that Metro was a complete failure, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you couldn't, if you looked it up in dictionary, you would have pictures of Metro, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I mean, sort of the tablet functionality from Surface, Surface Pro was just never there. The desktop stuff is awesome. I mean, I... Again, I use it Surface Pro. Use Surface Pro. I, I love it for desktop use, but the Metro part is yeah, I'm usually tablet part's useless. But I, I kind of wonder, is like, well, why don't you just make a laptop at some point? You know, well, why? So I maybe do. Maybe run that's what they're doing. I run a few. <laughs> I do actually run a few things in Metro mode. Really? Yes. Like Netflix, Netflix <laughs> and oh. Zinio. Okay. Those are the two. So, like, when I'm doing just like really simple media-based consumption stuff, that's when I use yeah. the Metro mode. Yeah. I have far fewer mouse clicks to deal with. And have you kind of played around with a lot of the uh, the Metro apps? Not really, because most of them aren't what I want. But like Netflix works well. <laughs> <laughs> You're not honest. alone in that assessment. I'm just gonna be right. honest here. I, I think I you mean don't want that. <laughs> yeah. No. No. 
<laughs> but you can still go maximum PC Metro app. Yes. <laughs> but um, there's one thing that I wish I could run as a Metro app, or at least at the time that I first started using the Surface Pro, that I, I actually run desktop. And that's Spotify, because in, in desktop mode, it's free. But I think the Metro app is actually considered mobile, so then you'd have to get a Spotify premium app uh, subscription for it. Oops. I see. I haven't checked lately to see if they've changed that, but... So you guys aren't believers in, in this in the Surface um, Pro I, I 3 think it is it is their most promising uh, Surface yet. I think it is a bit expensive. That price point. Well, seven hundred to two thousand is it's right. A but if yeah. if the ones that they've been showing media are the like the thirteen hundred dollar ones, that's what we're peop- that's what they're reporting on, right? Yeah. Right. So you can get some pretty well geared, not thick laptops for for that kind of yeah, money. You can get an ultrabook for. You definitely get a nice ultrabook at that price, especially with the new Nvidia cards with that use very little power. The mobile cards. And, and these are integrated. I think all they're all just Haswell yeah. integrated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not even Ibris Pro. I don't think. N- no, but I mean, yeah. I'm saying for that kind of money, you could get a laptop with, you know, right. 800 series Nvidia. But stuff. probably not as portable. Not as thin, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, th- those things. Your book's pretty nice. The, 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 the 800 series, the Maxwell stuff, I, I should say, um, apparently just draws like a third of the power, if that. Yeah, but are you getting in? I forget so, what so the that hell means things even way. You don't need big heat sinks anymore. Big I cooling think these systems. These are o- or over two. Sorry. So no, it's two right. pounds. So can you two pound ultrabook? I don't know. Yeah, the S7 is about is about two pounds. Yeah, so it's very light, but the S7 is big though, which I think uh, 13, is 13, 13, It's like 1.3 inches bigger. It's not that much bigger. Yeah, it's just you get more screen real estate too. Yeah, then it's light. It's That's kind of one thing I'm kind of bummed. The Surface Three is big, maybe almost too big, but then I'll, at the same time, these 10 inch screens get pretty small. Yeah. Anyways, moving on to uh, another topic from Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft uh, announced that their Xbox One will no longer require a Kinect, so you can actually purchase a separate SKU for the Xbox One. Well, to be fair, it never required Kinect. It only it just always came with Kinect. It, well. it required Kinect. Well, <laughs> you. So there was a saying. Or it was a saying well, where... No, cause, no, the reason I'm saying this is because in the beginning, right, like right. it actually required Kinect, okay. and then they dialed it back, okay. and then they, they dialed back some more. Right, so. right. So I, I guess I just brought that up because there was, you know, somebody early on asked, like, can I get... Uh, Xbox. This is before the Xbox came out. The Xbox One. Can I get an Xbox One without the Connect? And then uh, some Microsoft uh, exec said, "No, the Connect is Xbox One, and the Xbox One is Connect, or something along those lines." Is that Don Matrick? Um, it might have been. Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. And so, it was sort of the one thing that separated uh, Microsoft's console from everybody else. Also, a hundred duck, a hundred bucks separated. It's from separated that. you That's from hundred dollars. <laughs> That's true. Like <laughs> a I, minimum. I, I, so of people were like, "Hey, if I don't have the camera on the with the console, maybe we can get the console for less." Yeah. So, Gordon, no. why don't you sort of t- walk us through the situation a little so bit? So basically, Microsoft has retreated. So originally, right, Xbox five hundred dollars comes with Connect. Can you buy it without it? No. Yes, no. you can. Now they said it's been so successful. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants Connect. We love it. We're going to sell more Connect devices. We'll sell it to you without Connect. It's so successful that we don't it's need so to force you to buy it. It's so successful we don't have to force you to buy it. Well, honestly. That's the contorted messaging. I it, it's using. Well, so, okay, so I, I come, obviously, my I'm just from official Xbox magazine. You're the so apologist. I kind of, I no, not apologist, <laughs> but I, I, I find this personally interesting because uh, of just, like, the, the tortured path the Xbox One is kind of taking, like, has taken in this whole, like, yeah. marketing um, packaging, um, skew wise, and um, it's especially interesting because I w- I'm wondering if this is actually related to the shakeup that's been happening over there, right? So, like, Don Matrix out, they finally appointed, I think, with Phil Spencer in his place, and so his message is very different than what Matrix was. And they have a new CEO. Yeah, and they have a new CEO. So, I'm wondering if this is a result of how badly things have been going if be, or just new people being in Could a be combination both. of both yeah. like I, that's why I find it personally really interesting yeah I find it to be really bad news frankly because yeah I do too the, the, my, the Xbox One was all about the Kinect and, and it was this next generation beyond co- game console thing right. and it was like the one thing that made the Xbox re- truly different for a game console and they've and the fact that if you are not even if not er- your entire user base is going to have it, developers are going to go. Well, why do we want to actually build yeah. in this functionality? It becomes fragmented. In the game? 
So and that's the, basically what happened with the, the Connect 1.0 right. when it came so out. So they didn't want to repeat that, but now they have to back off because PS4 has been killing them in sales. Yeah, perhaps they should have started off by making it physically optional, like you didn't have to have it plugged in, because I think at the first you had to have it plugged in. I think they should have made you plug it in. I think it's the well, only that's way. They, well, that's the problem. They, they started with this vision, right? Like you always, it always had to be on. It always had to be connected. Watching it always, you. yeah, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> but at the same time, Judging if they you. <laughs> developers will take the path of least resistance, the vast majority of them, right? right. So they're not well, going to add all this really cool ass functionality of of connect unless they it's like, oh, everybody has it. Everybody's forced to plug it in. Well, let's, no, no, it's true. What I'm saying is that they started that way, right? right? And then they totally botched their messaging. I think, like, sure. they totally like the way they presented it, it was already kind of a dicey proposition um, to get a lot of like the core gamers to be like, sure, connect, let's do this, right? And then they kind of botched the messaging on top of that. So right. then you kind of had a problem with getting people on board. So they started backing off of it and then she's been kind of, I think, a death spiral from there. Yeah, it's been hard to recover, right? But it's I think it's too bad. I, mean, I think we've talked about it on the podcast before. There was I was watching uh, some review or something saying he was playing some basketball game on, on Xbox One. He started swearing. And the game, the the officials in the game would find him. They, they threw him out. He really? Got a technical foul, right? Wow. You had to sit out. Or, you know, people were pissed about that, though. Yeah, but I I know I understand that, but yeah. honestly, that is to me like wow. If, that's if that was really a public cool. game, that would be really cool. Yeah. Like, you know, because you you stop people from like they they need to add that to like League of Legends and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, imagine where your how you act is is factored into how games are, are made, right? It makes it certainly more immersive. Than yes, that's Re- reactive. crazy stuff. Yeah, a higher reactivity. I mean, it was just it was very aspirational. I mean, no matter what, obviously it's clear Xbox One is losing this round. We don't know whether it's gonna lose, but I I think it's just you got to give to Microsoft, who nobody ever gives credit to, for risking some crazy things, right? That that was a lot of risk on Connect. A lot of these are really very like crazy ideas. So when you played it safe, they played it conservative and they won. So playing safe well, and playing conservative is what it's won. Not over yet. I think after this holiday season, that's when we'll really see yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think that's also why they're making that move now. Because yeah. so that way, so bef- they can get this out of the way. E3 is going to happen. I, I'm going to guess that their E3 presser this year is going to be exclusively focused on the games. Right. Um, also, like, you know, what exclusives they might have gotten, um, big titles coming out like Destiny. Yeah, you're right. It's not over yet. Yeah, there's, 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 we've, we're only about six months in, right? Mm-hmm. Six months or so. Yeah, because so. it, November. It's so a marathon. Both systems came out. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a marathon, but Sony is like, kind of yeah. like up over that hill. Yeah, I mean, uh, so. Microsoft, I you know, hit a pothole. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my thinking is Sony has such a huge uh, lead right now. I mean, I, I think when you look at the specs, like the Sony s- system is a little bit, little bit more powerful, um, and I, I feel like Sony even has like more exclusive games as well, and it's also kind of in a way cheaper, you know, if you look at it compared to the uh, the version with the, c- the camera. So, like, what incentive is there to get an Xbox One at this point? Mm-hmm. Halo. Yeah. Yeah, there would be title, probably yeah. title reasons. Yeah, they've they, already you know. announced Halo yeah. Five for 2015. Does Halo still have its uh, gusto? I mean, is that still a huge, a gigantic system seller? Oh, I, I yeah. imagine. I mean, uh, yes, it's a very, very okay. Because I feel like there's difference. been so many Halos. I mean, that'd, that'd be like the quote unquote the fifth game, but there was like spinoffs, and then there was like yeah, they had they had ODST know. and um, even the Surface one. So I'm like, have they milked? The, is it have they milked? The, I don't I don't really play I don't that think series. So, so I, don't I mean, like they've for the most. I was actually surprised by Spartan Assault, like the little spinoff that you know came out for both uh, Windows and um, Xbox. Um, they've for the most part with that franchise, they've stayed away from like milking it to death. Like I would say, something like Assassin's Creed has gotten far more milked oh than Lord. Halo. Um, and Halo is just so, like, it had such a strong start. I mean, just such a strong start. It's won over so many fans and continued that through the first trilogy that I think it's going to be a while before they, they burn the fans out on it, especially because they're not doing, like, yearly releases with it. Mm. Unlike Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty, Creed. Assassin's Creed. I mean, the last Assassin's Creed was really good, the pirate one. But yeah, the, that but they, need a, they need a vacation. Dude, we seriously. need a vacation <laughs> from them. <laughs> and they're going to come out with two this year. <laughs> 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 Brotherhood, uh. Brotherhood too. <laughs> Although you know, I will make this prediction since we're probably sounds like we're wrapping up the console. I predict that this is actually good news in some ways, and I think um, there will be another generation of consoles. 
I really thought this would be the end. A lot of analysts also believe I think it was, this was, was the end, too. I, I think they were creating this doom and gloom, and it was just too early to say, and it's still too early to say, I think. No, not the, it wasn't even about the sales, but it was just sort of about, you know, they're getting, you know, mobiles eating into it, all the casual gaming's in, eating into to gaming. But I, I think the fact that, by and large, everybody said, you know what, all we want is better graphics. You can argue who has better graphics or not, but the perception is PS4 has better graphics. They want better performance, right? So it seems to me that console gamers are just like everybody else. They want more, more, more. They're no, they don't want to, like, move all their gaming into the cloud and play on their phone and tablet and all that, you know, stuff that uh, everybody thinks the future is about. Yeah. You know, because you, you know you can't do it. You need a fast CPU. You need a fast GPU. All local. You're not going to do all that stream crap over your, your shitty DSL connection. But they're still talking about it, though. Yeah, they're talking yeah. about it. But the fact that, but you know, it, like, yeah. by and large, I really thought, like, if, if, if the... If, the, if everybody said, we want Xbox One, we want this next generation of device, we need something beyond just same old shit, which is what PS4 is. Same old shit, better looking, faster, right? But that's what they want. So just honestly, I think there will be another generation of consoles because it's always going to get better. we got 4K televisions, you know, more mm -hmm. textures, all that stuff. You're going to need next generation console in hardware for that. So you're going to count out like cloud-based streaming games, like like the, like the Grid. So I'm not sure that's that's going to. I mean, it's not going to displace console gaming. I don't think it's like it's not going to displace PC gaming. I don't see that honestly ever happening. So we would have to have much better infrastructure. Yes, like if yeah. we were like one like the Asian countries like that South have, Korea, yeah, that yeah. have like fiber everywhere, then maybe it'd be a possibility. Yeah, like ten dollars a month. Yeah. But right now, we still have people in the rural parts of the United States that can only get dial-up. I mean, yeah. they don't even have broadband yet. I so. suppose. But also, I mean, to me, the thing that doesn't quite work is also like, man, that's a lot of... This is not just you streaming a, a 1080p movie. This is like you playing an interactive game right. and... It's dynamic changes on the fly. Mass yeah. dynamic changes on the... So, so Comcast is going to start charging whatever service... Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna start charging Microsoft. It's for like uh, it's like whenever you're, play, you're playing like a first person shooter, you, you have to pay fifty cents more every time you want to turn right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or I mean, the fact is, yeah, I mean, they could uh, get that, to that like that's the DLC. <laughs> the turn yeah, the right deal, pack, the right, the pre order right. now <laughs> to be able to crouch. No, but the, but but if you think about it, it's like, man, it's like I think uh, I remember one of the issues with the GeForce Grid early on. I don't know if it's still still the same or not, but they had this gigantic, you know, you know, rack full of you know, racks and racks of machines to basically support like 150 gamers. It's like that same rack if you were just running an email server it would be like 50,000 people, right? So are you going to be able to really scale? Are, the, are they going to give you all this the CPU cores and GPUs that you want back in their server for, you know, the amount of money? For, for the right price. For the, for right, the right price, you know? I think so. Yeah. Really? But you think so? I, I don't believe it. The problem it. is I don't think I they'd, don't they'd be able it. to charge a low enough fee that people would say, okay, they for if they had to pay, be able to afford all that hardware, the company that was on that service, they have to be charging people a lot, a lot of money. I think. Yeah, because it just more seems like you're, pay. you're paying a lot more. You need a lot more computing performance. You've got to pay more. I'm not sure everybody really wants to get into that. Yeah, I mean, it's already uh, you can already see that maintaining servers for just multiplayer, regular multiplayer, is already a kind of straining. Yeah, just ask EA. Yeah. Like <laughs> pulling <laughs> plugs in those servers every 18 <laughs> months on yep. the clock. It's like yeah. Oops. That's Buy the things. new version. Peace out. Yeah. All Sorry, right. guys. My Moving bad. away from uh, from that console, uh, we moved to another console, the Steam Machine, if you want to call it one. And uh, Alienware just got in the news the other day for saying that their Steam Box or Steam Machine will be their least profitable system yet. Um, so that's kind of interesting because as far as I know, Valve isn't uh, taking a cut of the hardware. So what was uh, what was their reasoning? I believe what it is is that basically they're trying to cater towards console prices. And obviously PCs generally are more expensive, but I think they're targeting a $500 price point. Um, where the margins are lower. Where the margins are okay. lower. Yep. And Alienware is known for having you know, pretty pretty sizable margins. Yeah, they don't, they don't do low margin stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah so do you, I mean, do you think that, that they need to price it themselves competitively with consoles? I'm not. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't see people don't. People don't really understand how Steam Machine is going to work, and I'm not. I'm not sure they really have to play that price game, but maybe. You know. Also, I suppose if you're selling the machine for five hundred dollars, but your games are only fifteen dollars or ten dollars, you could you could argue that you could have for you know seven hundred dollars, you could have twenty games or f you know forty games, whereas on a 
seven hundred dollars on a console, you'd have four games. So, well, let's say that you're just barely breaking even. Alienware is like making maybe a little bit. You know, the, the the margins are really small. Even if they were able to sell these units, uh, what do they have to gain in the long term? Because they don't make money. Like unlike Sony and Microsoft, they don't make money on the games. They don't get a percentage of the of the games. Yeah. So if you're well, making you know a dollar for every system you sell, what's the point? You know? They 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 get their brand into people's homes, and then they they start thinking, well, maybe I should get like a proper gaming PC instead of this uh, uh, entry level five hundred dollar job. Really, you know? I don't think and they see it like that though. I think they see the Steam machines as a viable platform that they want to support. Yeah, I think so. I think what. I mean, if you were talking about Alienware, which is a massive company, because you remember they're they're joined Dell. at the hip to Dell, their resources and and money are beyond what any of the other you know uh, Steambox makers. I mean, you don't have HP in here, you don't have Lenovo in here. It's 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 mostly boutique guys, kind of you know second tier, kind of uh, white box guys. They don't have the deep pockets of Alienware. I'm sure Alienware wants to get in there be the brand for Steambox, run everybody else out of the market probably because it's like at $500 I know I think I buy power and cyber power playing there but you gotta imagine if if, if Alienware is saying they're not, <laughs> they're gonna make like $5 on a machine these smaller guys it's gonna be even harder for them yeah right so I sort of I think they're probably their feeling is like hey in five years or three years you know Valve thinks long term you know we'll be basically we'll be in a good position to replace consoles and all the other guys will have quit, and we will basically be the console maker, right? Yeah. For for the Steam Box, Alienware Steam Boxes. So it's a very long long tail strategy. I I would uh, hope so, you know, because you know Valve does tend to, you know, think really long term. So, but well, rel- rel- relative to publicly traded companies, I would say, and I don't know if they have like a three to, because their 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 organizational structures is so flat that it's hard to tell how much they are aware of of their long term plan. Right. Yeah, we should also mention that the uh, Alienware Steam Machine, it isn't some uh, you know off-the-shelf right. computer. It's a, a custom, uh, small, almost a little bit bigger than a than a Nook, Nook, whatever. Yeah, the, uh, the Alienware yeah. is a eight by eight by three. Oh, so awesome! So it's bigger than a Nook. Okay, <coughs> so eight inches by eight inches by three. Right. Um. So you know, whereas and it's running Steam OS instead of Windows. Right. 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 And I think so. There's I, I think 13 Steam machines out there. And honestly, about half, and probably over that, um, are just PCs. Are just PCs, right. and they're sort of being uh, built as a Steam machine slash, or or you can install Windows on this and then just use it as sure. as a Windows machine. Yeah, I think yeah, definitely for you know Falcon and uh, whoever else they're doing these Origin. Origin, they they don't really stand to lose anything. These are just a PC. They've loaded Steam OS and they sell it to whoever wants to buy it, but. It's repurposed. They can sell it as a PC. It doesn't. They don't lose anything. They haven't invested. Like Alienware has actually invested in tooling. They've invested yeah, in custom motherboards yeah. and ASICs. So they put a lot of money into it. So yeah, and they're definitely smaller. I think the I buy power and Cyber power are closer in size to a console, but the Alienware is much smaller than a console even. Yeah, it's a it's a, about the same size. I think you put the controller on it. Right. It was about the same size as the controller, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Just my point is, I think Alienware has, considering they put so much R and D into this, they have arguably the most to lose. Out of the most to lose, there. and also, I mean, I, I saw them all at CES. You saw them, and the most impressive of them to me was Alienware because it's like it's a it's a custom designed PC just to be an actual Steam box. The other guys, for the most part, are PCs. You know? Right, right. And it's it's I or mean Windows, it's Wintel machines. So right? it's it's not like they've already spent a substantial amount of money on it, just in R and D. Yeah. So they, they could be in the hole for a while until it starts making a profit for them. Yeah. So, yeah. They, it, yeah. I'm sure they, they're they going <laughs> to hope it works. I, I, no one knows, right? No yeah. one really knows. I mean, have you guys heard more yet about, like, what exactly Valve has planned for, like, trying to replicate the console experience on the PC? They're, they're so, so tight-lipped it's in, d- in general. I mean, I think if you look at uh, Steam OS, and you can, you can install it now, um, albeit you kind of have to... Uh, go through uh, backdoor means type of thing. It's not too easy, as far as I understand. Right. Um, and you can you can sort of get a glimpse of what it what it's like. Yeah, I think for me, just coming from just a really strong console background, what for me, I mean, sure the price sounds right, and especially moving to Steam, the price definitely sounds right. But I'm I'm just kind of curious how they're gonna just make sure that the experience is as uniform. You know what I mean? Well, they don't. They that the. the 
Valve, and they've said this, the messaging has been, it's like, we don't want a lockdown world. We don't want, we don't want you get what you get from a PlayStation or an Xbox where right. it's this, right? It's an open, it's a, f- yeah, they want to replicate the, the wide open PC world experience of you can do whatever you want. It's I, I chaos and, you know. Even for, I'm talking about just within the games, like the handling controls. Because to me, mm. that's the biggest concern right. about moving so over. Because wha- they have that weird looking Steam controller. Right. And mm-hmm. then just from my personal experiences when I've tried playing uh, PC games with the Xbox controller, it doesn't always feel quite the same as right. on console because it's not tailored for that. They, the teams, dev teams didn't go in and actually like calibrate it. So how they plan to combat that so are uh, so online um, profiles of different uh, settings for the right. Steam machine controller that you uh. can download for per specific game. So if you yeah. want Portal, you can play portal settings and there's like all these different things that you can choose from so that's how they plan to combat the openness of that platform and, and also cra- crowdsource and I assume there's also like a, an API for the developers so that the controller behaves generally in, the, in a standardized way mm. from, right. one, from one game to another it uses the same language from yeah. one game to another that is an issue when it comes to older games that are already out though because I don't think developers want to go back and just like add this control yeah. API so yeah on, on uh, Clark's note I spoke to a uh, Valve employee at GDC this past year and they said yeah it's a combination of like uh, it's it's crowdsourcing essentially and what they do is they have this um, crowdsourcing measure where somebody will create uh, controls uh, custom controls for let's say portal or something like that and then you put it out there and then people download it and if they like it they upvote it so it's sort of like reddit in that aspect and then the highest upvoted uh, control scheme is actually the default but you can change it later so that's pretty awesome. That's cool. So is it going to constantly shift, or is it just that it whatever is the most popular is going to be what's kind of whatever is the most popular when you go into that setting? Yeah, and then you can change it if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. Right. So and the control I have used a controller. It's some people don't like it. I for a first person shooter experience, it actually worked pretty well for me, but it did not work. Yeah, I didn't. Did not I work didn't, for RTS games. I didn't. I didn't care for it myself. I know it's not done yet, but uh, and you tried it on Portal, right? You didn't try it. On I tried a it on Portal, and it was kind of weird too, because like they, I, f- I still feel like it's an odd game to show it off, because they put me, like where I started was like on this ledge overlooking this right. cliff or something like that, and then, uh, you know, I, I was just trying to get adjusted to the controls, but every time I walked, I would just fall off and die and respawn yeah. there. I'm like, this is a terrible game. Yeah. Why, why can't you just pick like Half Life Two and just drop me off in like City Seventeen or something? Yeah, like it was a, it was totally the wrong game. Yeah, to I could not like move because like every time I'd want to walk, I just fall yeah, off. The and game die. was one big death trap. So <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't make any. Because when I tried it at the, at the demo they did earlier, that w- it was with Borderlands and. You know, it took me just a, a minute, and I was running around circle strafing and things I could never, ever do with a uh, Xbox or any, you know, controller, right? You yeah. I mean, you're just yeah, you can't circle strafe with the You controller. can't circle strafe. I could do all that. I could run around. It just it worked really well in in a 2D kind of flat, you know, shooter. I mean, the portal, and you've got, like, this third dimension. It's it's yeah. It's yeah. way too much for people to wrap their brains around, I think, as a yeah. demo. At first, anyways. But you had that idea, though, that what if... Valve does the ultimate thing, which is Half Life Three only on Steambox. No, I, I was saying I was taking it to the next. I was taking it to the next level. So I think the internet would. <laughs> I would. I was saying that. So Valve. Uh, Wait, I think let's state. We you heard her here first. <laughs> Half Life Three only on <laughs> Steambox. No, Imagine if somebody's like watching the, the uh, this on YouTube and they're like skipping back yeah. and forth. Oh my god! Sort of, I'm, I got. This is how rumors start, yeah. right? Half Life Three confirmed. <laughs> uh, no, so Valve actually said that they wouldn't make any exclusive games for, for the Steam machines. Yeah, um, but uh, what I was saying, it, it would have been cool if no, I don't know if it would have been cool, but it would have been crazy if, like, so a couple years back, I think it was in 2007, Valve released the Orange Box, which blew everybody's minds. You know, back in the day, it came with Half Life Two and and Team Fortress and all that stuff. Yeah, for like, a, for like a dollar or something. And port- yeah, it was very. <laughs> I you know, think it was like twenty bucks. Twenty maybe. bucks. Yeah, it was really cheap. And so I was thinking it'd be awesome if they released a three box. And then it would have all their franchises <laughs> in the third form. So you'd have like Half Life Three, like Portal Three, Left 4 Dead Three, Team Fortress Three, and like oh my god, all all released at what that Holy same smokes. time. Yeah, and then and they you just confirmed this with your source. Y- yes, <laughs> <laughs> three box confirmed. Um, yeah, so that's I mean that's pretty crazy, but I don't know, it's just something we talked about at the office for three dollars. <laughs> for three dollars, <laughs> <laughs> more like thirty. You got to you got to make it palatable. Yeah, but it's three. It's it's the, the whole theme: Half Life yeah, three, three, Portal there's three, there's three in there. Yeah. Portal three, Team Fortress three, Team Fortress three for three dollars. Yeah, le- left, 
Left three dead, I you guess. Would, you would cause the internet <laughs> to, like, shut down. Dead three. Yeah. It would overload. Yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be... Because they, they, they don't have any games in the works right now that we know so of. So what's the fourth Left 4 Dead going to be called? Yeah, maybe yeah. Left, left, left 3 Left 4 Dead, dead 4. <laughs> I left for dead, oh, the fourth game. Yeah, there's Left for Dead, Left for Dead Two, and then so left the fourth one would be Left for Dead Four. It would just they would do the Apple thing, Left for Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Version 2015. <sighs> All right, um, changing topics. Uh, Tom, I, I believe you want to talk about the FCC, the world of the FCC. Not really. The goings but on. It's there. an interesting story. It's really. It's. I, I don't want to talk about it because it's kind of confusing. But uh, the the Federal Communications Commission voted to consider to allow internet service providers to start charging services like Hulu and Netflix uh, to, to have access to like Comcast uh, customers and all the other ISPs customers like uh, specific fees as opposed to the current system where um, there's there's a middleman like in Netflix's case it's a level three that give Netflix goes to level three to get access to the internet and then level three takes that traffic to Comcast and Comcast charges level three to get access to Comcast's network. Now what's happening lately is that Comcast is, uh, I guess in addition to that, going directly to Netflix and asking them for money because Netflix is using so much of Comcast's network. So now uh, the FCC is basically deciding whether that should be the, the, the new standard where you have this tiered internet access system where it, you have a person, a, a service has to have deep pockets in order to get access to Comcast, cable customers, uh, Time Warners, cable customers. I mean, name name your, your ISP. And so that, that means it could squeeze out like basically any internet startup uh, that, that starts generating a lot of traffic, like Twitter, like suddenly they can't afford to to reach the Comcast customers because Comcast is asking Twitter to pay them to use Comcast's network. So it's kind of messy right now. Yeah. That's, uh, it was funny because when we were talking about the whole, like, cloud gaming thing, like, I was thinking about that too. Like, that would yeah. also make it really difficult. Yeah, because Comcast would be like, yeah, pay up. And, like, and, be, and then be like, online would be like, boom, just fall over. Right. I mean, uh, w w what was weird about this discussion is that um, on the, you know, the blogosphere, the internetosphere, people were under the impression that Netflix is getting some kind of like free ride where they're not charged by any anybody except for um, that the, the, the Comcast doesn't charge Netflix, that nobody charges Netflix to get access to, to you and me, like on our TVs, but that's not the case. Every, everybody's getting paid, and now I guess Comcast wants more. Didn't Netflix uh, pay for the unlimited plan, though? <laughs> <laughs> um, Comcast uh, did actually used to cash act as a caching network for Netflix, but apparently now Level Three has started doing that. So Comcast can no longer charge Netflix as much money to do caching. So that's also there's sort of this second layer of, of stuff going on that isn't being talked about. But the upshot is that Comcast is making less money from the arrangement and apparently trying to do this uh, this new thing in order to. Get get more money. Basically. Well, boo -hoo. basically be Comcast. Right, and capitalism work. <laughs> it has some downsides and some upsides. Yeah, gotta love it. It's kind of surprising to me that they're they're trying to push this while at the same time trying to acquire Time Warner as well. You'd think you'd kind of want to be evil in small steps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to. I have to admire their ambition. You know, they want they want to buy. Um, it's like thirty thirty million customers, I think. On the on the Time Warner cable network, something like that. I know they're paying like forty five billion dollars or something. They yes. want maybe the largest acquisition ever. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy times. Um, you can, if you feel strongly about it, one way or the other, you can write your um, congressman or what have you. Well, I'm yeah, sure the can, our government will protect our rights. You, <laughs> you can go to FCC's website. It's it's fcc.gov forward slash comment, and then there's a list of all the. Um, the issues that they're that they're voting on in this issue that it's called proceeding 14-28 and you can click on that and you can leave a public comment about how you feel and you can do that up until uh, September 10th gotcha and then they then they make their final decision cool so transitioning into the world of uh, self-driving cars i believe uh, Clark you uh, you're going to speak about that 
Yeah, this is something that um, I'm actually really excited about. So I can I can officially say when I was in college, right? I I just finished my last day yesterday. Congratulations. Thank you. So when yeah, I was hey. in college. Yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. No, like my, my, That's my eight hours ago. Yeah. So my second semester, uh, I, I take a class and I get up there and I speak in front of one and I give a speech about self-driving cars and what that means in the future and the legislation, all that kind of jazz. So uh, the fact that we're one step closer to self-driving cars is, is amazing. But anyway, Paul Lilly did a um, an article yesterday on MaximumPC.com and he was talking about how um, uh, the DMV has now struck up some legislation so that you have to have a permit to drive a self-driving car um, and you have to be trained um, and the company must have five million dollars of insurance. Mm. And the reason why this was so interesting was because back in 2012, I printed all this stuff out. <laughs> that is a lot of paperwork. It is. He's organized. I'm trying to be. So back in, in 2012, there, there was a bill that went through, uh, Senate Bill 1298, and it said it basically gave DMV a deadline and said, hey, you guys need to uh, adopt regulations no later than uh, January 1st of 2015. So the fact that, you know, today was the day, you know, the 21st, that, or at least, you know, within the last week that they actually came up with these regulations about, you know, what to do with these self-driving cars. Like, who's liable if you, if you, get, right, if you, get, in, if you get into a wreck? So it's, it's a pretty big mess. Um, so, so who are they saying is this liable? Sorry. Um, they're trying to pin it on Google. They're trying to pin on the programmer. And Google okay. a, Google ac- accepts responsibility, they, they say. Interesting. Yeah. I have it right here. They said... Uh, so do 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 they, yeah. I have it somewhere. But basically, it's just like Google is accepting responsibility if you get into a wreck. Uh, and then Paul Lilly was saying, like... Paul Lilly said, um, say a front tire blows out and your autonomous car swerves. After calculating the, the outcome, the self-driving car can either swerve to the left into oncoming traffic and kill multiple people and save you or it can swerve to the right go off a cliff and kill just you <laughs> what what should the car do wow <laughs> so it's just like if, if all this if all if all these algorithms can be calculated and they can be they written by some google programmer like that's a lot of power. And I hope he's in a good mood that day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I figured, like, that's got to be, like, some kind of setting, right? Like, you're, like... <laughs> kill all mode. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck kill those guys. Like, kill other so people. Like, there's going to be, like, Spock mode, right? Where it's, like, the needs of the many outweigh the few. And then there's going to be, like, the... Like, <laughs> selfish the asshole. <laughs> the selfish asshole mode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so when like, you... When you first Kerr. <laughs> I think most people are going to go with selfish <laughs> asshole. Yeah. So I guess, like, so would you fill out a survey when you first sit in the car and say, all right, how are you today? What's your name, Jimmy? Do you prefer other people to die or you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 tough, man. I wonder what I really wonder is if the Google self-driving car would be like mm-hmm, taking me to work, but hey, how come we're going here? Oh, um, I don't know. The, do you need something from Safeway because there's a sale on beef jerky? Oh yeah, you know I, I need some beef jerky. Oh, thank you for taking me here, car. You also how do you milk. know that? <laughs> you also want milk. Reading your email. Oh, you've been yeah. reading my email, but <laughs> I I don't mind. I'm here. I might as well get the milk and since the you say jerky. traffic is bad. So yeah, and then they're like, and you're you're talking to your car like I don't have money. It's like actually I know how much is in your bank account, and you do have money for that milk. <laughs> you can't afford it, so go right ahead. Um, so I don't know if your uh, Gordon. I don't know if your opinion has changed, but I, I know we sort of disagreed uh, when it came to the future of uh, self-driving cars. I do think that in the relative near future they will be available uh, at the <coughs> consumer oh, level. Uh huh. And I know apparently you still disagree. Um, so can you sort of speak to why you don't think they'll ever come to fruition? Well, because humans ultimately have to be in control. I would rather say if I <laughs> were going down the road and Clark was on the road or driving off the cliff. I'm sorry, Clark. I'd probably run you over. No. I think you overestimate our, our cap- or underestimate our, our capacity for laziness. No. I think most people just go on and get it, get in the car and just watch sure. y- YouTube or. I know yeah, that everybody would just rather sit at home all day watching they'll cable just, TV. They'll just get in the car and like Comcast. take a nap and like eat or eat a bag of chips and just stare <laughs> at the window. But I'm saying our society is built on personal responsibility, hopefully, and actually humans making decision, and it's just not. I don't believe it's possible to integrate a a car that's driven by a computer into our society. It's just I not possible. I got it. I got Someone's got to be. I got a to counter point. to that. I got a counter to that. Mm-hmm. So one bring of the, it. One of he's these prepared. articles. Yeah, yeah, I do. He's he's not an intern. Any, he's not a student anymore. I'm not a student. The anymore. student has become the teacher. So there mm-hmm. is an article about the Atlantic that calculated um, 
that for every 100,000 miles you drive, there's a 36% chance within that 100,000 miles that you'll get into an accident. And so the Google car has already, or you know, they've already logged over 300,000 miles. They've never gotten a ticket. None of that bullshit. Wow, that's incredible. So if, if they're safer, if well, they're safer, one of the arguments that Tom Halfhill brought up, right, in the, in a, the fast forward Who's PC Tom Half- contri- yeah. contributor. Yes, well, he's Tom one of our columnists. Yeah, he's been doing it for a while, so it's fun to go back and read those articles. But he says, he says, uh, when robotic cars establish a superior safety record, which they are right now, insurance companies will begin hiking premiums for human drivers. Eventually, most of us will be priced out of the driver's seat. Well... Here's the question I have, though. What happens when you mix something that's theoretically, I don't know, let's just say, for the sake of argument, perfect, with something that's inherently not perfect? Because humans are prone to making very random errors, totally random errors. And then you have a system that is theoretically supposed to be perfect and can calculate everything. Right. When you mix those two, then what's going to happen? Yeah, the, one of the problems of, of the self-driving car is that the self-driving car is the self-driving car is, is dealing with an in- inherently unpredictable element, and that's, Humans. that's the other that's people. Us. That's us. The yeah. thing is, like, I mean, how many miles have they driven? Over 300,000 as a Wow, 300,000. That's like, what, one trucker drives <laughs> in, like, one fucking year? <laughs> I mean, the, the, the amount of actual data from that is, like, so fucking infinitesimal. Yeah, that's well. like, oh, that one star in the sky, clearly there's no life in the universe, right? I mean, there's like I got none of the quadrillion pl- fucking planets in the universe. That's just, once they actually implement their self-driving cars in an actual, if they're actually deployed, there are going to be some fucked up things that happen, right? I th- so I think that self-driving cars will come out at the consumer level, but I do think that society is going to go crazy when the first death happens. I, I, th- I think in the generation... That That's going to be a big they're, they're rollback. They're, they're going to be the norm... For uh, for public transportation, or I mean, not not like buses, but I mean for 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 the public. No, or like I can see like never. metro, right, where it's a contained system, like that could work, possibly. Like an iRobot. I, th- I think if somebody was going to drive from like San Francisco to Los Angeles, would you rather just sleep the whole time, or would you want to actually do that drive? Because me personally, I'd rather drive. That drive fucking kills me. I hate that drive. I'd drive rather is drive. the worst. <laughs> somebody that has to be I control. Drive is the worst. They tried this on the Enterprise. <laughs> they put that M5 <laughs> computer in control, thing went fucking crazy, okay? You don't think the Google car is going to do the same thing as the M5 computer? It could. Same thing. This could be the start of, you know, the end. That's why humans have to be in control. You think the uh, the Google car is going to become self-aware and yep. decide to just <laughs> murder well, all they this Obviously, this they're gonna, it's going to lead to, like, the whole Terminator movie series. Like Skynet. Like 2001. Yes. Uh, Space Odyssey. I just, I to me, I find it, I, I find it ridiculous. I mean, I, I love the space program. I love that we sent a, you know, incredible robot drone to Mars, but it doesn't mean shit until the first human steps onto Mars. It's not an accomplishment until the first human steps on Mars. Who cares? Whatever you send a machine, nobody cares. You know. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting things to to think about. Uh, we're gonna move, uh, change topics. Move over to Facebook questions. Hopefully, uh, change the dynamic up a little bit from death spirals. <laughs> <laughs> um, Something more cheerful. Yes. Are we uh, under ra- uh, computer control on the podcast at the moment? I forget. <laughs> Somebody check. We are moving to Facebook questions. Uh, David Romney from Facebook asks, will the Microsoft Surface ever gain significant public acceptance and market share? Uh, that's really dependent on Microsoft. Define significance yeah. in market share. Will it, will it be... <laughs> <laughs> no. Could it be a legitimate third player in the uh, iPad, Android, I don't <coughs> tablet? I so. Why not? Because it's, it's, it's a very expensive item. It's yeah, as a tablet, it's way too expensive. It's not a, it's not a mainstream device. It, I love it. I mean, I, I have a fucking Surface Pro right here, but it's, it's, it's not a mainstream item. It's just not... It's just too expensive. It has to be basically, you know, $350. So forever niche until they uh, drop the price, huh? Very likely. Yeah, I, d- I don't see them. I don't see the Surface 3, like, kicking Toshiba off the list, and Toshiba certainly not, whatever. You know, Chromebooks, well, I mean, like, significant market share, I, you know, Chromebooks are, are huge, and they're insignificant. So I don't see Surface 3 catching up to Chromebooks anytime soon. Mm. Uh, this question is probably best uh, for suited for Tom. Colin McCoy asks, does Wolfenstein... Uh, the new order actually make use of the eight processor cores. Yeah, I, I saw that question, but I wasn't able to actually 
set up a system in time to do the test. But <laughs> I was I was actually just short of being able to run the benchmark when we had to start the podcast. But I do have an i7 4770K system with a, a 780Ti in it. Now I'm going to start doing some uh, benches um, probably this week. But um, kind of loaded on on work for the magazine, so. How's how's the game been performing so far? Just from a um, experiential test. Well, I I at home I have an i seven thirty seven seventy k and a Titan, so I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit on the high end of the of what's needed, so it's it's running fine for me. But I, I can't say that that would be necessarily the same for somebody with a like a GTX seven sixty or a, or R seven two seventy X. So well, I I would like to test on a variety of stuff. We just um, the the other issue was that we didn't uh, get keys until like a day before the game came out, unfortunately. Mm. So I was I had I had been hoping to get it last week. And the game does have a benchmark. Uh no. Oh, you okay. have to use fraps. I think just sort of uh, go through and try to standardize a a route through one section of the game and then see what you get. Gotcha. So. All right, the next question is actually probably, again, uh, pretty good for you. Uh, Matthew A. Perez says, In a Cooler Master Elite 120, what would be an exceptional water cooler to place in for an overclocked mid-range system? Uh, that's the shoebox, I think. Um, yeah. The Elite 130 was actually the, the case that I was using most recently. Uh, and that's one I would actually recommend because in the front there's like a... Um, oh, it's... Yeah, this... It was... I actually... Wrote about it recently <laughs> on the website. I believe it's the. Oh, actually, yeah, we, I wrote a book on it. I we, 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 yeah, we, we put a, a build it from the magazine <laughs> up on the website recently, and it's the uh, Radeon R9 290X in a shoebox PC article. And that case is the uh, the Cooler Master Elite uh, 130 or 130 Elite, I can remember. And um, one of the advantages of it is that it has a recessed 120 millimeter uh, fan. <laughs> Thank you. Tom is in, reading his own work in now. Color. Color. Um, he is running by robot right yes. now. Remote there, control. There, there's a recessed mount in the front for a 120 millimeter fan. There's actually so much space in the front that you can put a 120 millimeter radiator in push pull and still have space for a video card and so what would you, one what, or two what color devices. would you recommend? I would. I would. Well, in that case, I think I went with um, Hydro. Take a look at the article. That's right there. Uh, Hydro H75. And I think an H80i would also fit. Uh, I don't think an X40 would fit because that's a 140 millimeter radio. Right. So that's uh, that'd be too big. And that box was a 4770, I think, was it, or 40, 4570? 4770K. Yeah. So there you go. There's two good options right there. Um, next question comes from Chris Jackson. What are some si- warning signs that might indicate uh, imminent GPU failure? You screen lo- corruption. You yeah, I would say I would say screen screen corruption. Um, yeah, little bits of artifacting on the screen. Right. Like I've I when I worked at Nvidia, I did some uh, Fairmark 3D Fairmark stuff, and I'd overclock it, and yeah, the screen would start showing like weird colors and things like that. Uh, that's probably the first sign. Checkerboard patterns on 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 yeah. textures, yep. textures in checkerboard patterns on surfaces. We're talking about a 3D game. Yeah. I'd also probably check the the GPU temperature as well using something like uh, hardware monitor tools or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if it's getting you know, depending on what GPU you have, it's if it's getting above the norm, um, that might be a bad sign. And also, if there's smoke coming out of your yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if yeah. you haven't cleaned out your computer in a while, it can collect a surprising amount of dust. In some in st- extreme cases, you do need to take the shroud off the video card. You know, when the computer's not running, take the video card out. <laughs> and remove the shroud. It's usually just on there with like some Phillips uh, screws, sometimes Torx screws if, if they're being assholes. Mm. But you have to take the shroud off and, and blow like a can of compressed air on the um, the fan, the, the, the assembly, the cooling assembly to get all the dust out. That's cool. I actually haven't done that, but uh, yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, Red Graves says, is AMD dropping out of the performance race? Temporarily. And I, b- I believe he's just well, talking about the CPUs. Yeah, yeah, CPUs probably. Yeah, I, I think they're just taking a break. Um, hopefully they'll be back in the game in 2015, but um, that's a long ways away for a lot of people. Gotcha. Uh, last question comes from Twitter. Eric VM asks, what is the best video card uh, without external power needed via PSU connection? I think that was... Is 750 Ti? Yeah, that? I would yeah. say, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not really sure... Why he'd want 
uh, I guess is a four. May not thing. have it. He just may not have the power. Yeah, power could, could have like an older Dell HP box that doesn't really have much in the way of, of power, extra power. You know. Yeah, 750 Ti doesn't require any power at all. Three, it'll run. I think yeah. Nvidia said it'll run on a 300 watt power supply or something. Oh That's wow, yeah, incredibly low. I think we have like six of them for it's, whatever it's reason. It's pretty awesome at 1080p gaming. So that yeah. would that would be. Uh, a good solution. Yeah, it's pretty cheap too. Like, like hundred dollars, hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred less than hundred fifty. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, um, let's move on to editors' pick picks of the week. Uh, when we go around the table here, so Clark, you can go ahead and start. And everyone is thrashing on um, uh, mobile games, but I'm <laughs> I'm trying to beat the twenty forty eight puzzle. It's, uh, I don't know what that is. I'll show it to the camera. So it, it's it's this four by four grid. And the object is to basically shift the tiles around, and eventually, um, if you if you have two tiles, so there's two twos in the same spot. Uh, mm -hmm. You just like shift it to the left, and then it makes a four, right? Mm -hmm. So then you just like combine the tiles, and then you eventually get a uh, a twenty forty eight. So I got a thousand twenty four right there. So halfway there, it's kind of neat. Free app, Android, and probably on iPhone. So go check it out. The f the twenty forty eight puzzle. So it's it's a math based puzzle. Base, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I am not downloading that. Then next, <laughs> <laughs> fail. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's fine. I just, you know, I'm lazy and dumb. Still alone in that, that holding out on that mobile side. Huh? Yeah. Is there, is there sound coming out of this? Nope. I couldn't tell. Nope. Right, I need to admit this okay. and stuff properly sure. so you can. Elena. Oh, I didn't get skipped this time. Yes. Yes, and I apologize. <laughs> Last time. I was being a dumb butt, and I skipped Elena. So Normally, we don't have five people in here, so... Yeah. Last time, my, my choice was Child of Light. Beautiful game. Great um, homage to uh, classic JRPGs, so if you're interested, check that out. Oh, and apparently, the apocalypse was coming. Yes, it sounds like... It does sound like <laughs> the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the mic's coming. Like, that was like death hovering over above us. Whoa. Okay, well, I'll just be quick then. Um, so my pick <laughs> this time around is um, Classic Theme Restore, which actually I found out about through Tom because um, Firefox finally upgraded itself from 28 to 29, and it looks yeah. like Chrome. She was and like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this shit? It's basically yeah. what came out of my mouth um, when I saw that because the layout is like completely like Chrome. So now when I have them both open, I really just don't know which browser I'm in anymore, which really was irritating. Gotcha. What was the name of that again? Sorry. Classic Theme Restore. It's an add-on for Firefox. Classic Theme Restore. Cool. All right, uh, Gordon. Unfortunately, uh, I did not do my homework. So, uh, <laughs> did your dog I eat do it? Do not have a uh, a a pick, but that makes it so there's less things to listen to. Gotcha. Okay, Tom, how are we doing over there? Well, my my pick is the. Um, you know the show, the new the new show Cosmos, or the new version of it with the yeah, it's great. Neil, Neil, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I don't know how to pronounce it. DeGrasse. Him. DeGrasse. Neil deGrasse yeah. Tyson. Uh, it turns out that there's an Android and iPhone iOS app you can download and just watch all the episodes. You don't have to go, really? go through your on-demand. I'm guessing episodes that are, are only out. Right. right. Okay. It's called the app is called Cosmos, so it's so it's pretty easy to find. Okay, so you can yeah. just sort of stream it. It's sort of like you can just stream like these. Yeah. Just watch. I'll watch. It. There's like 13 episodes, I think, in the first yeah. season. So yeah, I'm a yeah. little bit behind, yes. but I, I'm liking the series a lot so far. Yeah. Uh, my pick is called uh, is a website. It's called uh, www.howlongtobeat.com, and it's for oh. you know, it's for the gamer like me who doesn't have a lot of time to game but wants to game. So I have a bunch of games on my backlog that I want to go through, but if it's a really long game, I probably will set it aside. So how long to beat? Um, it basically averages how long it takes to, to beat certain games from a community of, of people. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking for, you know, games that are, like, under a dozen hours or so yeah. that I can sort of beat in, like, a, a weekend or two. That website is great, too, because they don't have just, like, one single number. They'll actually give you, like, main campaign or main campaign plus extras or completionist. Or right. So you can actually kind of get an idea depending on what kind of gaming style you have. Yeah, I'm, like I'm an explorer, you. so... Yeah, so you'll want the biggest number. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I mean, there. like when I was a kid and I didn't, you know, I didn't have expendable income and stuff like that, and like my parents would only give me like... Yeah, you want, you want to get the most for your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would be like, I want to get 100% of this game, but I just, I don't have time anymore, so I just want to, you know... Why don't, um, why doesn't Google work on technology to, uh, you know... Self playing game. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so I can like watch it. I can't make it through this level on Wolfenstein. <laughs> it's called it's called YouTube, so they actually did kind of do that. <laughs> let's let, watch any let's play of a, yeah. of a game. So why do you need to play the game? You can just like 
watch yeah. it. Just yeah. watch somebody else play it on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Those are super popular. Yeah. Super yeah. popular. And yeah. Re- and we didn't talk about this, but rumor is that they're also buying Twitch in a way as well. So that's yeah, like one billion dollars was the offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Golly. they were apparently courted by Microsoft as well, and they turned. Oh, the Death Seriously. is coming back. That sounds very. I, th- I think it might be another Horseman, maybe. Yeah. It, it's. It, I don't know. How would you? It's like a dark. Sound demonic that dim- r- yeah. rumble, like this deep rumble, like <laughs> <Yeah>. rolling kind <laughs> of sound. <laughs> <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Gordon can rant about that uh, in his upcoming rant, which uh, starts right now. <coughs> Class, listen up. Gordon's going to present his rant of the week. Who's the dumbass who came up with this idea? I mean, what kind of a what kind of a fucking loser? You're wasting your fucking time. I hate all this shit. <clears throat> I'd say I, I uh, want to bring up something. I, I don't want to, the person to be able to figure it out. I don't think they will be able to. But I know somebody, not in this building, but is sort of a relative. And I'll say that to, to throw any clues off. That always wears too much of that fucking body spray shit. Oh. Right? Yes. Right? Axe. I would rather... There's things I was just thinking, what would I rather smell than fucking Axe? <laughs> I'd rather, like... I would rather go to the dump and smell like old rotting garbage. I'd rather... I think I'd rather smell raw sewage. Right? Because, I mean, like... Can you tell the difference? No, you would actually... I, I would actually, like, oh, my God, the smell of this Axe is so strong. <laughs> I would actually go to a sewage plant just to get rid of the smell... Of the axe. <laughs> right, you know what I'm talking about? Because it's not even like, and of course, these people that wear it, they wear so much of it. That it's like, okay, it's not even like they're just near you, but they actually, the, they, when they're in your car, and I'm saying that because we had a relative, this person I'm talking about, that rode in one of our vehicles, and it's like, whoa, what the hell's that smell in here? <laughs> and it was just like some body spray. And now your seed is now that he said, and it's going to be scented for like the next six months. It, it was. I mean, <laughs> the stuff is horrible. Who but it's not for you because it's meant to attract women, and you're not. Whoa, a girl. whoa! So I am going to vote a no <laughs> on that big no. What? You're shattering my world here. <laughs> That's what I live to do. Sorry. I don't get it. I have to rearrange all my bathroom items now. <laughs> So Throw away X. Do they like only sell it on the Costco size, where it's like a <laughs> five-gallon drum, and there's kind of like, psh, you, yeah, psh, you can get one with a little hose psh, attached, and you can just sort of pour you it you all just, over your you body. Just shower in it instead of actual water. <laughs> that stuff is horrible. I mean, they were just like, I just, I really, there are just things that are like that smell better. I would well, rather well, smell. I, I like, think like burned food. Or it's <laughs> supposed to be. It's. I think people treat it as like a like a cologne, but it's supposed to be a deodorant. Is it? I don't know. I think I, so. I, I, I think it's some weird is like, it? love child of the two. Okay. Cause Clark I was knows. He goes to school, so I bet he knows <laughs> people who wear that stuff. In sixth grade. <laughs> Which sixth was grade? like... In, I remember. I remember. That was like uh, two years story, ago, is this, though. This is, this is story time. Story time. In sixth grade, everyone thought it was funny in the locker room to take the axe spray. Everybody had axe spray in sixth grade, right? That, that was cool. That was cool. And so you take Axe Spray and you'd start <laughs> spraying it on people as they're like getting dressed or something. That was pretty funny. Wow. And like because you, like, so people knew like, it smelled like, like, like hell. Like Tom's, <laughs> um, like Tom's right here. Like, <laughs> like I got his, I got his ear. So you just trolling each other with yeah, the spray. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, but the just, spray itself it, is not cool. So it was used as a weapon to torture people. Yeah. Is what it, you're it, saying? It was a weapon. <laughs> Psychological warfare. <laughs> but they knew it was horrible. Yeah. Why did everybody have it? Because it was a weapon you could use to torture people. And they want to torture each other. <laughs> I would rather smell skunk or or like or canned farts <laughs> than, than fucking body acts. Do they have those? Acts. Can you just fart in a can and seal it up? They have. I'm sure they have canned farts, and it smells better than the body The internet is a big spray. and scary place, and you can buy Yeah, I probably things. shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> so is it just with uh, Axe, or is it with all the spray types? I, I don't know, because like, like I, I don't know what, what the stuff is that she wears. It is interesting. Oh, it's a she. Oh. I, I, that's why I'm oh, not too, not too for no, information. Axe is, a, is the male body spray. So you may that's be... That's what's wrong there. there. Is there a female version of, of well, Axe? Well, Bath and Body Works, hello. Like, okay. So my experience in like, like middle school, high school, everyone in the locker room, like, what was it, sun-kissed raspberry everywhere. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> I, I can never eat this fruit again <laughs> because you guys are ruining it for me. They get, they get your ear. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. They didn't spray it on other people. They weren't. They weren't trolling each other with it. They were spraying on themselves. Uh, 
it. Like genuinely. No, we we thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> but but you had it though. That's what I don't understand. It's like you had canned skunk spray, and then you thought it was funny to spray on people. <laughs> yeah. Kids yeah. But then they would. Would you voluntarily wear it? Did the kids wear it? Anyway, I mean, like, oh, that was funny. Now I'm gonna spray some on myself. I think it kind of died after after middle school. I mean, they still sell it, so somebody's buying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't hate it as much as you. Um, it's just a really strong. Some people can definitely no, overuse it. Well, I mean, maybe if it's like used the correct dosage, but I've never seen anybody the use correct it dosage in the correct dosage. dosage that it's supposed to be used in. So, are you against like perfume and cologne too? I have a problem with it's way too strong. And the thing about perfume and cologne is it it doesn't it doesn't cling to things like that. Whatever that that Axe body spray so it is, lingers more. Whew, man, it just like it's like it's <laughs> glued on to it's like super glue on a seat. It doesn't come off. It's not coming that's, off. That's how the company marks its territory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I it was in our car and it just like it took days for it to go away. Really? Sometimes the best cologne is just a nice wash shirt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just wash. Yeah, just out of the dryer with the laundry detergent, Clark which smells is, awesome. Just, I just like how he says it in this like this really calm voice. Like yeah. I know you should make like commercials. Just thinking about it, you should make commercials for like like <laughs> laundry companies or something like that. Laundry detergent. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> the, can you say it again? Like the, say it in your most like <laughs> commercial. That was no. That sounded like an, that did sound like an advertisement. Yeah, dude, say it again. They can use it as a clip. Sometimes, the best cologne, is a nice washed shirt. Nice. End scene. <laughs> there you go. Um, so is that about it, or should we wrap it up? Oh no, actually, I. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the time I was on the Millennium Falcon. Right, yeah, okay. I was getting a lift. Right. And like, so you go up to the fucking cockpit to sit down, and this fucking there's there's goddamn fur everywhere, right? And like Chewbacca's chair. I'm not sitting in that chair. Shit that thing, could you imagine yeah. what fucking Chewbacca's chair looks like? Yeah, especially if he wears Holy axe, too. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, I know you know Chewbacca wears the axe. Hey, just because you're hairy doesn't mean that you're making a mess. But I'm just, yeah, come on. There's like, it's like, it's like, it's like 400 dogs piled up in a one giant fur ball. Right? Yeah. Princess Leia called him a giant fucking fur ball. Yeah. And you're sitting in that chair and you get up and like your entire <laughs> back is just fucking covered with Wookiee fur. He probably carries a dust buster with him. I, they don't. They don't care. <laughs> Han doesn't care. But I'm just saying, it's gross, man. But you're not, I mean, that's Chewy's seat, though. Chewy. Yeah, yeah but you got to you got to ride in the Falcon when whatever they're you know back fixing the engine or whatever. But it's just, and you have to. It's like well, I, I will bring this up. It's like sitting in Josh's back seat because right? there's I, always oh, cat fear in I, Josh's I, I back guess, seat. I guess the problem you I, get up and you're covered with cat hair. It's like that times 100 in Wookiee fur. I, I think the problem I would have in that scenario is that he's not wearing pants. Chewbacca doesn't wear it. Doesn't wear any undies. Well, that's the other thing. So he's sitting there bare ass naked on that chair. Right, and you got to sit on that covered <laughs> with <laughs> fur and I'm gonna sit on that. Sweat. It's gross. You know, Poop that particles. is just gross. <laughs> Saying, oh. The hyperdrive's out. We got to repair it. Go up and fly this ship. Oh, damn. <laughs> really? Can I? Did you have autopilot or something? One of those Google, <laughs> auto Google flight pilot? It's like, no, it doesn't work. It Google. always crashes into fucking <laughs> asteroids. We can't use that shit. But no, it works. It's, 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 it's a lot safer than flying the Millennium Falcon yourself. It's like, no, no, no. Just sit. Oh, Fuck. Bring you got to sit down on the... Oh. Bring a tarp. You just hover over the seat. Could you, <laughs> yeah, like you're just kind of <laughs> hovering Swat. over the... I would just get one of those toilet paper things and just put it on Chewbacca's seat. Oh, uh, the, the ass gasket? No, but you're yeah. going to need a tarp or something because you want the back cover too. Otherwise, yeah, the fur... Yeah. Because yeah. just 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 you know he's got to get sweaty every once in a while. <laughs> sweaty, yeah. doesn't wear underwear or pants. I mean, when he gets wet, he probably smells like a wet dog times <laughs> 10. <laughs> Why didn't they make him wear fucking clothes? Like, at least a tie... Fucking no. Yogi Bear yeah. wore a tie and hat at he least. Just wore this belt across Chewbacca, his chest. no, nothing. But he's yeah. like he's fucking like a bandolier. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a hybrid between like like a like a animal and like a human. So it's his fur is his outfit. You know, it's like dogs don't wear clothes. Yeah. Yogi Bear wore a hat and and and, and, a, a, and, a, and a tie. He could at least have the decency to wear that. He's wearing ammo. No, yeah. he needs that. He needs that. Yeah. Why didn't they take the ammo? They would take the bowcaster. They wouldn't take his ammo. Would he be naked without that little thing of? of that's that's yeah, their that, underwear. That, that would be indecent. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's where his genitalia is. Just, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't know across <laughs> his chest or <laughs> diagonally. I'm just thinking. Just remember just Star Trek. With yeah, the, that's good. That's the, not the knee. They they went oh, to that yes. the, the, uh, the frozen planet. Yeah, not yeah. the knee. Yeah. Wait, which one was that? 
I think it was five. It was six when they got sent to the prison planet. Oh yeah, six. Yeah. Oh, we're a penta. Yeah. 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 Oh, he got. He's like he's that much pain because he got kicked in the knee. It's not the knee, bro. (laughs) Yeah, that was the best scene when Shatner kissed himself. I think in a way it was. It was yes. (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's very symbolic. I've anyway. actually I've actually met Peter Mayhew by the way at some the Comic Con or something. And right. was he wearing pants? Uh, other enough, <laughs> no, which is very weird. <laughs> but he was what, wearing what? the bullet strap across what, his chest. What kind though, of so con okay. was this? Uh, <laughs> better not to ask. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Just don't, don't sue me, Peter Mayhew. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess that that about wraps it up. Uh, you can check us out online at maximumpc.com. You can follow us on. Twitter and Facebook. If you want to join the conversation, you can email us at maximumpcpodcast at gmail.com. You can also leave us a voice message at 1877-404-1337, extension 1337. You can subscribe to us on Google Play, iTunes, Kindle, Nook, and Zinio. On behalf of Clark Crisp, Tom McNamara, Elena Yee, Gordon Maung, I'm Jimmy Thang, and thank you for listening.